Now we are going to discuss activity 14.10. Okay, here we need a laboratory stand. This is a laboratory stand. And what is this? This is a round bottomed flask. We need a round bottomed flask. This is a flask. The bottom of the flask has been round. Okay. Then we need some condis crystals. You know what are the condis crystals? These are condis crystals. And these condis crystals should be covered with wax. Then we need a candle. So what should we do? Here we have to fix the flask to the stand, laboratory stand. And we have to take some condis crystals covered with wax. Then put these condis crystals into the bottom of the flask. Then we have to pour water. Pour water to the flask like as the figure. Then we have to heat this flask by using the candle. Then observe what will happen. Okay. Here after some time we can observe that here. These are condis crystals. These condis crystals are purple in color. So here we can see the purple color rises up from the condis crystals and sinks near the wall of the flask. So purple color rises up and sinks near the wall of the flask as uh, convectional currents, as currents. Okay? Here. Yeah. As currents, the purple color rises up and sinks down near the wall of the flask. So, what is the reason for this incident? Here, what will happen? We are heating the flask using this candle. So, the water in the bottom of the flask heat, heated up. So, because of heating, density of the water near the bottom reduces. Density reduces because of because the water is heating. Okay, because of this reduction of density, the water of the bottom of the flask rises up. Heated water rises up. Then, in the top of the flask, there is cool water. So, the density of cool water is high. So, this cool water sinks down. Heated water rises up and cool water sinks down. This is happen in this practical. So, the heated water rises up and cool water sinks down as currents. We call this current as Convectional currents. Okay. So, the water in the flask heated by these currents. Using convectional currents. So, here we can realize that water heated up by convectional current. The method of transferring heat through liquids by convectional currents is known as Convection. Okay? Understood? So, what is the meaning of convection? The method of transferring heat through liquids and gases by convectional currents. So, that means the method of heat transferring through liquid and gases both by convection. Now, we are going to discuss application of convectional currents. What are the applications? First one is sea breeze. What is the meaning of sea breeze? Have you heard? 
breeze. What is the meaning of breeze? Breeze means slight wind, slight wind. Mother Solanda. So, sea breeze. Wind that blows from sea towards the land. Wind that blows from the sea towards the land. So, this incident occurs during the daytime. We can feel this sea breeze during the daytime. So, what will happen here? What is the reason for this sea breeze? How it occurs? This is sea and this is the land. So, during the daytime, the land area heated faster than sea water because of the solar heat. Because of the solar heat, the land area heated faster than the sea water. So, the heated air currents rises up. The air layer near to the land heated faster and rises up as convectional currents. So, the low pressure area is created here. The low pressure area is created here near the land. So, to fill up this low pressure area, the air in the sea area comes towards the land. From the sea area, air currents come towards the land. So, this incident we call it as sea breeze. So, we can feel it during the daytime. Second incident is land breeze. Wind that blows from the land towards the sea. So, at night we can feel this incident. Okay, uh, how it happened? So, here during the night time, the temperature of the land area decreases faster than the sea area. So, that means the land cools faster than the sea. Okay, during that time, uh, in the sea area, the temperature of sea water is high. Because of that, the air layer contacted with the sea water gets heated and rises up as convectional currents. Con as rises up as convectional currents. So here in the sea area, low pressure area is created. So here low pressure area is created. To fill up this low pressure area, the air current flows from the land area towards the sea. The air current flows from the land area towards the sea. So, this incident we call as land breeze. Okay? The sea breeze and the land breeze. So, do you know this? The fisherman. The fisherman takes support with this sea breeze and land breeze. How they get support? The fishermen launch their sailboats to the sea in the night time. So, they can get supported with land breeze. And they return back to the shore in the daytime with the support of sea breeze. We are talking about the heat transferring methods. The third heat transferring method is radiation. So, what is radiation? It is the method of heat transfer without participation of the particles of a medium. So, here this is a method of heat transfer but no need of particles. So, uh, the heat is transferred but there is no need of particles. So, in previous heat transferring methods, in conduction and convection methods, particles are needed. Solid particles, uh, air particles and liquid particles are needed. But here in the radiation, particles are not needed but heat transfers. For example, heat travels from the sun to the, to the earth. Heat travels from the sun to the earth by 
radiation and we feel warm when we are near a fire. So this is because of radiation. Do you know any heated object radiates heat? Any heated object radiates heat. Because of that we feel warm when we are near to a heated object. We feel warm. That is because of the radiation. Okay. To discuss more about radiation, we can do another practical. Activity 14.11. Here we need the same size tin cans. These are the tin cans. We need three same sized tin cans. So, we have to color the first tin can with black color. Then, color the second tin can with white color. And keep the third one as it is with a shining surface. Then, put same amount of cold water to each tin can. Then, fix the thermometer. Then, we have to fix the thermometer. After that, we have to place these three tin cans in the sun. Okay. Then, measure the temperature in every five minutes time and tabulate the readings. First, we have to take initial temperature. Before we keep these three tin cans in the sun, we have to measure the initial temperature and record it. Then, place these three tin cans in the sun. After that, we have to measure the temperature in every five minutes time and we have to tabulate the readings in this table. This is the table, page number 56. So, after some time, we can observe that the temperature of water in black can, the temperature of water in black can has risen higher and also we can observe that the temperature of water in the can with shiny outer surface has risen very less. Here in black color surface the temperature risen faster. Here in the shiny surface it is very less. So you know the water in the tin cans are heated by solar radiation. It is clear that the black color absorbs radiated heat faster. This is black color. Black color absorbs radiated heat faster. And also the shiny polished surface do so very slowly. Absorb the heat very slowly. So white surfaces also absorb radiated heat less than but less than black surfaces. So, black surfaces lose heat very fast while polished shiny surfaces do so very slowly. Therefore, hot water in containers with polished shiny surfaces can be kept hot for a long time. So, we are in Sri Lanka. So, countries like Sri Lanka get more sunlight throughout the year. We get more sunlight throughout the year. Therefore, it is more suitable to use light colors to paint outer walls of the buildings rather than dark colors. It is because light colors absorb radiated heat less that prevents the interior of the house from heating. Okay, now your lesson is over. Let's discuss about the summary of the lesson. This is somewhat a long lesson but you have to study well these points. Okay, what is the meaning of temperature? That is the measurement of coldness or hotness of an object. That is called temperature. And we have discussed about heat. Heat is a type of energy. Temperature of an object increases when heat is supplied and decreases when heat is removed from the object. 
So, what is the instrument used to measure the temperature? It is thermometer. The property of expansion of a liquid is used in making liquid thermometers. So, what are the units of measuring temperature? There are three units. Degrees Celsius, Degrees Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So, what is the international unit of measuring temperature? It is Kelvin. So, clinical thermometer is used to measure body temperature. The boiling point 100 degrees Celsius and the freezing point 0 degrees Celsius of water are the fixed point of a liquid thermometer at 1 atmospheric pressure. And lastly, we have discussed about heat transferring methods. There are three heat transferring methods, conduction, convection and radiation. Now you can do the exercise and read the lesson again. Okay, uh, we can meet with the new video lesson in the next week. Okay, bye bye.